So we saw that if we add two numbers that are too large, we get a result that's negative. And we kind of have some idea of why this happens. We know that it's because the numbers are in a binary and that they have a fixed number of bits in them. In the case of an int, there are 32 bits. We can actually get a little bit more information about this. It turns out that we can ask the integer type what its minimum value and its maximum value are. So from this, we can see that if we ever do uh, arithmetic where the result is bigger than 2.15 billion, that it will overflow and go to a negative number. In fact, you can take max value and add one to it, and you get the minimum value. And so it just wraps right around. There are some other types that we have. So the int uses four bytes to store things. There's the smallest numeric type that we have is a byte. And the byte's minimum value is minus 128, and its maximum value is 127. This is exactly what you would expect for something that only has eight bits in it. If you need more range than that, but you still don't have to have an integer, you could force things into a short. The short's minimum value is a little over negative 32,000, and maximum value is a little bit above that. Um, one thing to note, while I'm pointing out that these types exist, and there are a few places where you wind up using them, by and large, we're going to stick with int. A lot of the arguments for using smaller types to save memory really do not apply anymore. And it's not just because our computers have so much memory that you're not worried about it. There's also the issue that the way that computers access their memory is more efficient if you take it at certain increments. And so it turns out it's, it's often more efficient to work with an int than it is with a byte, uh, even though the int is larger because the int type is actually kind of hardwired into your machine. On the opposite end, there is the long type. Now, this can be useful if you actually have a number. What if I needed to add 2 billion to 2 billion? And we saw what that did before. And it goes negative. Well, if I could do this in longs, and I can turn a literal into a long, by adding an L to the end of it, then I can get the correct answer. And that is because the long is a 64-bit value, which means that it can handle much larger numbers than what the regular int can. Uh, for almost all problems, long will be large enough that you are not going to overflow it. Uh, these days, you can actually come across problems where you're going to overflow your int but it's much harder to, to overflow the long. And so it's a 64-bit value. It has eight bytes in there that it uses to represent these numbers. The other numeric type or integer type that we have is actually the character type. Now, what gets printed out if I call min value is a little bit interesting because it happens to be a character and it's a character that doesn't print nicely. But then I can convert it to int. Turns out the minimum care is a zero. And this is because the character is stored in an unsigned value. It cannot have negatives. And the maximum value is a little over 65,000, which happens to be 2 raised to the 16th power minus 1. So this is a 16-bit or a 2-byte value that's used to store all characters in the Scala language. And that's it for our basic integer types. So you have the one bit byte, or the sorry, the one byte type called a byte, two bytes in a short that's signed, two bytes in a care that are unsigned, four bytes in an int that's signed, and eight bytes in a long that is signed. Vast majority of the time we're going to use an int, but it's helpful for you to know the others when they come up.